Okay, so you know how everyone's always talking about the future of tech and what's coming next? Yeah, definitely. Well, lately I've been super fascinated by operating systems, you know, like the brains of our devices. Yeah. Especially what Google's been up to. Oh, yeah. Google's always doing something interesting. For the longest time, Chrome OS and Android have felt like totally separate worlds, right? Like two different planets in the Google Galaxy. Right. Each with its own orbit. Exactly. Yeah. But now we're seeing all these signs that they're on a collision course. Like they're about to merge into this super platform. And that's causing quite a stir in the tech world. It really is. Okay. I mean, think about it. If your phone, your tablet, and your laptop all run essentially the same OS. The possibilities are pretty mind-blowing. Exactly. And it can be kind of overwhelming trying to keep up with all the technical details. Definitely. There's a lot of jargon flying around. So that's why we're here today. We're going to take a deep dive into this whole Chrome OS and Android convergence. Yeah, let's cut through the noise and try to understand what's really going on. Exactly. We've been doing a ton of research for this. Articles, reports, even those sometimes shady but often intriguing rumor mills. Gotta stay on top of those leaks. You know it. But... Our mission today isn't just to bombard you with a bunch of facts and figures. No, we want to make sense of it all, connect the dots. Right. We want to figure out why this convergence is happening, what it means for us as users, and how it's going to shake things up in the tech world. Because this has implications for everyone, not just Google. Think about Apple, Microsoft. Yeah, the whole landscape could change. Big time. So yeah, let's dive in. Let's do it. So the first thing that really jumped out at me from all our research was this major technical shift that's happening. This isn't just a little software update. It's way more fundamental than that. Right. We're talking core architecture here. Exactly. Like back in June 2024, Google officially announced that Chrome OS would be built on much of the same technology that powers Android. Specifically, the Android Linux kernel and the Android frameworks. Yeah, that was a huge signal. Like they were laying the foundation for something much bigger. Totally. But now I'm not a software engineer, so I need a little help understanding what this actually means in practical terms. Well, think of it this way. Before this change, Google was essentially developing and maintaining two separate operating systems. It was like having two teams building two different houses from scratch. Okay, I'm following. But now by switching Chrome OS over to the Android tech stack, they're basically using the same blueprint for both houses. So it's more efficient. Way more efficient. They can focus their resources on making one really solid foundation. And then they can build different kinds of houses on top of that foundation, right? Exactly. And those houses represent different devices. Like your phone could be a cozy mungalo, your tablet, a spacious townhouse, and your laptop, a full-on mansion. I love that analogy. So we're not going to see Chrome OS disappear entirely. Not necessarily. It's more like it's evolving taking on some of the best features of Android. Right, and becoming more versatile in the process. Precisely. This means faster updates, new features rolling out more quickly, and a more consistent experience across all your devices. And we've already seen some early examples of this in action, haven't we? Absolutely, like that unified Bluetooth stack that was introduced in Chrome OS 122. Oh yeah, that was a pretty big deal. Huge. It might seem like a small thing to the average user, but it's a sign that they're really integrating these operating systems at a deep level. Okay, so that's the technical side. But what about the apps? That's one of the biggest draws of Android, right? Mm -hmm. That massive app library. Oh, absolutely. Millions of apps for everything you can imagine. And Chromebooks can already run Android apps, thanks to the Google Play Store. But I understand that this convergence could make that integration even better. Much, much better. Right now, when you run an Android app on a Chromebook, it's often happening in a separate container. A container. Yeah, it's like a little sandboxed environment that keeps the Android app separate from the rest of Chrome OS. Oh, I see. So it's not a perfectly seamless experience. Not yet. But as Chrome OS and Android merge more closely, those separate containers could eventually become unnecessary. So the Android apps would feel like native Chrome OS apps. Exactly. They would run smoother, faster, and just feel more integrated overall. That would be amazing. Imagine all those incredible Android apps running flawlessly on your Chromebook. It's a game changer. And not just for users, but for developers, too. Think about it. Right now, if a developer wants to create an app that works on both Android and Chrome OS, they have to build two separate versions. That sounds like a lot of work. 
It is. It's time-consuming, expensive, and sometimes just plain frustrating. But with this convergence, they might only have to build one app that works seamlessly across all devices. That would be a huge win for developers. Huge. It would open up a much wider audience for their apps and potentially lead to a lot more revenue. So everyone benefits. More apps for us, more opportunities for developers. It's a win-win. Exactly. And it's not just about Android apps coming to Chrome OS. We're also seeing Linux becoming a bigger part of this whole picture. Linux. Now that's a whole other world, right? It is, but it's becoming increasingly relevant in this new landscape. So Chrome OS has had Linux support for a while now through a feature called Crostini. Right, I've heard of that. Basically, Crestini lets you run a Linux virtual machine within Chrome OS, so you can access a full Linux terminal and all those powerful command line tools. Okay, so for developers and power users, that's a big deal. Huge. It opens up a ton of possibilities. But here's where things get really interesting. Android 15, which rolled out earlier this year, also includes a built-in Linux VM. Wait, so now Android can run Linux too? Yep. It's still early days, but the potential is there. Imagine having a full-fledged Linux environment right on your Android phone or tablet. That would be insane, like turning your phone into a serious develop machine. It's blurring the lines between what we traditionally think of as mobile and desktop operating systems. Totally. So we've got Android apps running on Chrome OS, Linux running on both. It's like a big melting pot of operating systems. It is. But it's not just about the underlying tech. We also need to talk about the user experience, you know, what it actually feels like to use these devices. Right. Because Chrome OS and Android have very different design philosophies. Totally. Chrome OS is very desktop centric. Lots of windows, keyboard shortcuts, very mouse driven. Android, on the other hand, was built for touch. It's all about swiping, tapping and intuitive gestures. So how do you combine those two approaches? Well, that's the million dollar question. And Google seems to be taking a smart approach. Instead of trying to force everything into one mold, they're focusing on adaptability. Adaptability. Yeah, like making the interface smart enough to know how you're interacting with the device. So if you're using a touch screen, you get the familiar Android experience. But if you connect a keyboard and mouse, it shifts to a more desktop-like environment. Ah, uh, so it's context aware. Exactly. And we're already seeing this in action. For example, Chrome for Android now supports extensions. Like the ones we use on our desktops. Yep. So you can have the same ad blockers, password managers, and productivity tools on your phone or tablet. It's super handy. It is. And on the flip side, Android 15 has introduced some powerful desktop features, like proper window management with freely resizable windows. Oh, wow. So you can finally have multiple apps open side by side on your Android tablet. Yep, just like on a regular computer. And there's also support for virtual desktops. So you can organize your workspace and switch between different sets of apps. Exactly. And it's not just software. Google is also pushing its hardware partners to create more versatile devices. Yeah, those convertible laptops that can switch between tablet and laptop modes are becoming super popular. They're awesome. And with this convergence, they're going to become even more compelling. Imagine a device that can seamlessly transition from an Android tablet to a full-blown Chrome OS laptop. That's the dream. Yeah. And it's not just convertibles. There are rumors that Google is working on a Pixel laptop that runs Android natively. Oh, yeah. The Snowy Project. There's a lot of buzz around that. And if it's true, it could be a real game changer. Imagine a premium laptop with all the power and flexibility of Android. Plus, that instant-on responsiveness, the always-connected capability thanks to cellular chips and access to millions of Android apps. It would be a serious competitor to the MacBook Pro and the Surface Laptop. No doubt. And this could inspire other manufacturers like Samsung and Lenovo to create even more innovative Android-powered devices. We could see Android desktops, ultra-portable laptops with detachable screens. The possibilities are endless. And let's not forget about gaming. Oh, yeah. Gaming on Android is exploding right now. It is. And with the power of Chrome OS, we could see some truly incredible gaming experiences on these new devices. Imagine playing the latest AAA titles on your Android laptop. It's mind-blowing. And with the Unify OS, we could also see much better accessory support. Right. Like a single keyboard that works seamlessly with your phone, tablet, and laptop. Exactly. So everything just works together beautifully. No more compatibility headaches. It's like they're creating a whole new ecosystem. They are. It's Google's answer to Apple's walled garden, but way more open and adaptable. So we've covered the technical changes, the potential new devices, but what's the big picture strategy here? What's Google trying to achieve? 
Well, first and foremost, they're trying to streamline their own development processes. Yeah. Maintaining two separate operating systems was becoming a real burden. Right. It's like they were competing with themselves. Exactly. So this convergence allows them to focus their resources, avoid duplication of effort, and ultimately deliver better products faster. And it also gives them a stronger platform to compete with Apple and Microsoft, right? Absolutely. They're going after Apple's dominance in the tablet market, and they're trying to create a more compelling alternative to Windows. Let's start with Apple. I mean, the iPad is a phenomenal device, but it still has some limitations, right? Definitely. It's fantastic for consuming content, but it's not always the best tool for getting serious work done. Right. And that's where this converged OS could really shine. Imagine an Android tablet that's as fun and intuitive as an iPad, but can also handle demanding productivity tasks like a Chromebook. Exactly. It would be the best of both worlds. And Google seems to think they can even surpass the iPad in terms of mobile productivity. They're pretty confident, huh? They are. And they might have a point. Apple has been very cautious about adding too many pro features to the iPad, probably because they don't want to cannibalize their MacBook sales. Makes sense. Yeah. But that caution might give Google an opening. Exactly. They can be more aggressive, more innovative, and potentially capture a large chunk of that hybrid user market. The people who want a device that's both a great tablet and a capable laptop. Precisely. And then there's Microsoft. They've been trying to bridge the gap between mobile and desktop for years with Windows. Yeah, they even added Android app support to Windows 11. They did, but it hasn't been super successful. It's clunky, it's buggy, and it just doesn't feel native. Right, it's like they're trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Exactly. And that's where Google has a potential advantage. They're starting with a mobile first OS and extending it to the desktop, which might be a more natural evolution. So it's a battle of approaches. It is. And the outcome is far from certain. But one thing's for sure, this is going to be an incredibly interesting space to watch over the next few years. Totally. I mean, who knows what the future holds? Maybe we'll all be using Android laptops in five years. It's definitely possible. And if that happens, it would have huge implications for the entire tech industry. No doubt. So what do you think, listeners? Are you excited about this Chrome OS and Android convergence? Are you ready for the future of computing? <laughs> because it's coming, whether we're ready or not. And it might just be powered by Android.